everybody, I'm La Tour from 75 Girls and today I'm with Mendo Dope. Um, we're gonna be playing a game today called the Hot Box. I don't know if you can see it, but it's right here. Um, so basically, you're gonna pick a yellow paper. The yellow paper means like what to smoke. The orange paper just asks you a question and then in between I'm gonna be getting to know who Mendo Dope is. Okay. Right. Um, first of all, let's start off with who is Mendo Dope? Mendo Dope is me and my brother. I'm Old E. This is Bleezy B right here. Uh, we started Mendo Dope along uh, about 10 years or so ago. And uh, we built it up to have a full band now. So we have the Mendo Dope band. We have all of our people with us. It's growing. We got our boy Mr. Blap, Trevor Lyon, Johnny Fingers. Um, so the Mendo Dope crew is growing right now. Nice. And can you tell me a little bit about where you guys are from and what else you guys do besides music? From Mendocino County, um, we live all we've lived in Ukiah, Redwood Valley, Talmadge, all around Mendocino County here in the little heart of Ukiah, kind of around the outskirts. Um, we also do ganja farming, so we grow major plants, uh, big trees. We got videos online, all crazy. We just, uh, help a lot of people out, learn how to grow organic medicine. Um, a lot of people look up to us as good farmers, so they're always asking us questions. So we ended up making a DVD so we can help teach people. Mm -hmm. And we're just trying to spread the cannabis culture for clean medicine and uh, all organic. Cool. So before we get into you guys as growers and as musicians, um, let's start this game off. You want to go first? Sure. Why not? Okay, so the yellow one is going to tell you what to smoke, and then you pick up. And then you pick an orange one, but you open the yellow one first so that you know what to smoke, and then after you do whatever the yellow one says, let's, then you answer the question. Let's see what it's saying First here. One. Take three hits off a joint or a blunt. Well, okay. hey, I got well, a blunt you go. right here, so I guess I'll take my three, and I'm gonna take an <laughs> orange one as I'm puffing. Yes. You already know how to play. I'm already on top of it. <laughs> What's the first thing you do think of when you wake up? Well, first thing I do is smoke. <laughs> roll something up and get blazing, start the day hey, off. Roll up the <laughs> I'm thinking about that fire. <laughs> nice. Um, okay, so while I'm asking you another question, you can go ahead and okay. play. Um, but, so as growers, um, I know you guys have that song, Weed Nerd. Mm -hmm. I'm totally not a weed nerd at all. I'm, oh. a, I'm a weed smoking veteran. Like, <laughs> so me, like I smoke, but I've never grown a plant in my life. So can you tell me, like, is there like a simple <laughs> way of like, or maybe like some three do's and don'ts to growing? Um. Well, it's. It's kind of, I don't know, it's kind uh, of... Uh, if you're a rookie, you're saying? Just um, off top? Yeah, or, sure, or if I want to grow my new. own little plant. I mean, like, I think your guys, um, you guys have huge get, plants. Try <laughs> to get trusted plants from someone you know. Clones, okay. preferably. Good genetics. Um, don't listen to all the hype about bottled nutrients. And you don't need them. It could be fully organic, very easy. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, hand trim and jar your stuff at the end. Don't machine trim. and. Don't yep. use the flowers once you've took the time so to grow. So don't machine trim. Yeah. We don't like to machine trim. We're so all guys, about the hands. We trim, we hand trim everything. Do you have a team? Well, we have some we have people that people. definitely come in, yeah. Because I've heard that it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. But we've been it's trimming a year since, round job. It, we've been doing trimming, you know, since before we were making music. A okay. long time ago, before we started growing, that's how we learned about growing, was trimming for different people who were doing it big already. So we just went in there and kind of soaked up the game and some knowledge and started growing ourselves. Cool. Yep. So I don't sets, know how. Take oh, two sorry, hits. Go ahead. I already took take four. Okay. Oh, <laughs> 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 double, double win. Yeah. We're getting the boring ones. There's like other ones that's like take a dab. We tried to do gravity bond and we tried to do... You're gonna get the bonger, dab one. But. If we get a dab, we're passing it right to you so you can taste the psychoactive. I'm gonna taste it tonight no matter what. What's your biggest media regret? Do you um, get that question? Yeah, I get it. We don't really have too many media regrets. We have killed plants like with baseball bats and chopped them with like axes and swords and shit and pissed a lot of people off. <laughs> but uh, we just don't really regret it. it. Just, just for the fun of it because we have like, plants that are extra and they're, just, they're not good plants. People wanted to wanted them in the first place. Yeah, like, oh, you could have done something with it, blah, blah, blah. But we know that it wasn't, it was a we extra like, plant. Yeah, we like to have fun because mm -hmm. we have an abundance out was here. Was it at least a Snickle Fritz plant? It wasn't even a bloomer plant. It was just in veg. It was going to be a, there was okay. either one it was a male. It could have been Snickle Fritz. One <laughs> was just know, yeah. right, weird. It was, some seeds aren't going to be perfect. So some of them, we just kind of have fun with it. We chopped a couple and 
did a couple of vicious Rocky Balboas on one and uppercutted the crap out of it in slow motion and pissed took a couple uh, hippies off. But other than that, that's the one thing that people got mad at us about. Yeah, but I wouldn't even regret it though because it was so funny. We were just doing what we do and a lot of people saw for what it was. Yeah, it was people understood fun. it was fun too, but and it was half and half. So getting into your guys's we take growing. three hits. I get to take three more hits. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> maybe I should have made it more fun. Honestly, I'm because sorry, I had the bomb rage and then I had I had the gravity bomb hey, in there. I know the gravity bomb was so good. I'm all about the flowers. That's what I do. So mm -hmm. three hits to me is I'm I'm all about it. That'll bring me to a future question. But um, <laughs> you guys had said that you had a DVD on how to grow. Um, what is that called and where can people find that? Um, it's on our website right now, meadowdopemusic.com. It's, um, oh, check it out right here. here. It is. It is called How to a Grow Mendo Dope. Boom, boom. <laughs> it's a three disc set that shows you everything step by step from starting a seed to jarring your weed and smoking it. Sure. I'm trying to get invited up here to trim one time though. Oh, Just yeah, because I've never done that, I'm down to help for a day. Yeah, there's a, we could set I that did. up. There's a lot of trim in <laughs> An hour. Um, so on to my next question. Um, oh, go ahead. Did you want to? I guess, yeah. So it says, what is the most illegal thing you've ever done? Ooh. Ooh. Oh my God. <laughs> Dry snitching. Oh, quite incriminating. <laughs> <laughs> Don't even wet snitch. <laughs> <laughs> I'm wondering if I should have, if I should have said you could plead the fifth, but. I, I might have to right now. <laughs> really? Yeah, I don't know. All right, I mean, choose I another guess, one. Choose we, another one. All right, all right, let me just choose. Let's not snitch on ourselves. What about the most illegal thing you've done that you're caught for? Well, <laughs> yeah, I mean, because I was going to say, you know, I, I something that we've already been busted for, the most illegal thing we've done was grow a, a backyard full of plants so big that we got raided by the local by sheriff the and, the, and Camp and Comet. So that's all on blast already, so it don't really matter. That was pretty illegal. But hey, we're frontline soldiers, and the, you know, this is what we do. We grow to help people out to show how it's done. How has that changed with like these like recreational laws? Like has it changed? Do you guys still get? Um, it's, it's, um, it's, it's, things are still in the works. There's just some people that are getting the uh, papered up and getting it really pro. And uh, there's a lot of stuff that's changing still that we're all still learning and trying to lock in. So for us right now, we're still in the works to figure out the, uh, the full 100% legal system. We're about halfway legal right now. Okay. So. There's a lot of changes that are kind of hard to to, roll to with, figure out what the hell's going roll on. With so, the yeah. Yeah. I feel it. Like. Um, go ahead. If you could smoke with any celebrity, who would it be? Hmm. Take it to you. I was gonna say we just gotta smoke. Well, it just happens so. Well, yeah, so um, I think uh, I would really like to smoke with someone like uh, like Seth Rogen or something like that. Okay. You know, he'd be pretty funny. Kick back and have a nice nice real session with him and just crack up. That's dope. Let's see what you got. Take one hit off a of blunt or a joint. Uh, oh, that's the Marine way. That's like a punishment. I know, that's like a punishment card. <laughs> one hit. That's all moved back two spaces. <laughs> I think we might have to bring in Mr. Blapper Trevor. They gotta grab one. Maybe they'll get lucky. <laughs> Nobody say anything. 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 Have you ever had sex in public? <laughs> oh my god. That's a 75 question right there, by the way. Yeah, we, I have for sure. That's a 75 question right <laughs> With a blanket or a sheet or whatever. <laughs> yes. Yes? Yes. In like a park? Um, uh, um, in a car next to a park. Oh, okay. So <laughs> that's still pretty safe. Yeah, it wasn't. When I don't I'm know, thinking public, I'm like playground. Like, I haven't done it in an <laughs> elevator or anything like that, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, elevator, no. Someone's definitely watching you. Um, yeah. So tell me about your guys' band. Like, you know, everybody's in the building, so. Well, the band, How I did mean, you guys get together? The, How did you guys start? Well, first of all, we'll start with, I guess, Mr. Blap. You know, we've known Mr. Blap for a long time. It has to be what, like, what, eight what, years? Eight, eight years. nine, so close to right ten. The you know? We met yeah. him through Reek Daddy from doing songs with Reek Daddy in Sacramento. Reek Daddy is the motherfucking instigator. Yeah, he was the, he was the Cold Crest Cider, the, the gangster of the year, you know, he was the, the most rawest rapper out there, I still mm. think. He would go the hardest, he was... He the was ultimate a, super singer, for yeah, sure. Talk was, mad shit, just all his music was just fuck you music, just the raw, so the raw. So if you're in that mode, it's that was the sickest shit to listen to. Yeah, it was NOYB, that's none of your business records. That's <laughs> what we're representing from the first time we got into music was, was with Reek Daddy, and he really gave us the opportunity to step into the game and, and show us and lace our boots on how to 
how to come up with songs, how to do this. Please, he started making beats, and mm. and we just kind of stuck with it. We would just go down there and work with Reek all the time, you know. And it was so cool for us because we've been listening to Reek long before we started making music. Mm. Before we even knew who Reek was, we'd hear songs and be like, "Oh, this cat is dope. This shit's hell sick." And then we found out, "Oh, that's Reek Daddy." Started following him, getting his album. So. He's a real Bay legend, you know. For sure, Mac Dre was one of the first. That's how we probably saw or heard of Reek Daddy. Uh, Smoothie was also, uh, with the Reek Daddy songs we heard, was how we got kind of hooked on Reek Daddy too. Smoothie had those crazy beats. I always liked those weird beats, so I was hooked on songs on those kind of beats. Um, yeah. For sure. I mean, no, not that you're here saying it, but no your shit, Nicotina's it music, was, we were listening to that. Tales of Two Andres, that shit Tough. was hardcore, like super bumped that shit over and over and over and over again. Ever since I Hate You With A Passion, you know, the beginning shit, all mm -hmm. the Dre Dog shit, like we were bumping that shit. So that was a big influence for us. Like yeah. all the all kind of Bay Cats, like Spice One, um, uh, of course, like Tupac, Biggie, cats like that, that were a huge inspiration, the way they flow, the way they did their yeah. thing. Yeah, so, what about, um, what about Live in the Garden? Like, what made you guys want to record in a plant? <laughs> Just because no one's ever done it, or like... Because no one's ever done it, because we have so much fun in the garden, so we come up with a lot of our music. So, and then, like, when we moved into our grandpa's house, he had the uh, archway thing. And we're <laughs> like, we'll just put it next to a plant and do one song for fun outside. And then once we did the one, it was where we were hooked. And it, it sounded like, good. We didn't think it was gonna sound good. So it sounded good enough, we're like, all right, let's keep going. That was my next question was, did it affect the sound at all? It like, sounds better than our studio at the really? house. Really? Yeah. I mean, the studios that are nice, So it's everyone's the only way messing up. You gotta well, record yeah. inside a plant. It's yeah, I mean, that, it's so cool to be able to do that, you know, instead of going to a, a traditional, just a house studio or a big studio, like we go to record with Kalu down in the Bay Area over there. And to be able to grow our own booth, you know, our own vocal booth from mm -hmm. seed and train this plant to be something like that and, and to bring in all the guys from the band and really lace up mm -hmm. live instruments on all these songs and everything is done outside in the garden. We only thing that happens inside is the mixing because it's really... It's impossible to mix. I try to mix a song, I go inside, I'm like, ugh, it's horrible. <laughs> Um, what, from the what mix is it's just like hard because you can't get nothing behind you to echo the sound or something. Oh, okay, so yeah. it's like super loud vo vocals, super loud effects, and you get in the studio and you can really hear it. And I got to yeah. mix it inside. And so yeah, I mean we grew we grow all the time. So like you were saying, our ideas come out when we're in the garden. So to be able to blend the music with the growing even more and take it into the studio mm -hmm. like that was like the perfect combination for us to do. Killing two birds with one stone, basically. Yeah, exactly. Because exactly. nice. we'd be working. I'll work while he's making a beat. I'm watering yeah. the plant over here and he's getting the mm -hmm. beat started. I'm like, oh, I got an idea. I'm going to come start right in. And, and then, then we're outside taking care of the plants more too instead of being in the studio half the time. We're like in between working in the studio and on the computer making the, whatever we're doing at the time. We're also looking at the plants, checking, walking around, doing stuff. So Would y'all would y'all rather be independent or be on a major label? Independent these days. Yeah, I think from these the, days. Uh, these days. From well, from all the shit that we hear all the time, you know, it's just so much bullshit that happens in the big industry and mainstream. It just seems like, with us being able to fully control our own material and do what we want to do, and mm -hmm. be able to still have that whole piece to ourselves, it's kind of. And I just, think too, like a lot of our music isn't like what people like to the like the mainstream crowd. So it's we're not going to make the shit people are going to really like enough to. We sell. don't make like club songs and that kind of stuff. You know, we're we're we make cannabis culture music. You know, we really speak the tradition that we do out here. Can I put a little bit of um, introspect on that? Just coming from Seventy Five Girls Records, um, I think that you guys are kind of basing it on like. Def Jam and like you know what I mean like the big record labels. Yeah, or yeah. Like, what if it were to be like local record labels or there's, even like for sure even like there's a someone that's willing to work with your creativity as well as like yeah, you know, there's opportunities that we were we would be interested in. It's just a lot of uh, um, figuring out the uh, the full circle of what would it, what it would entail. Yeah, all exactly. this like down to we the, feel like we built enough up to where we have a very solid base that we need a big push to get to the next level. But at the same time, it's like. It's how far do we want to go? Do we want to make millions of dollars or do we want to just do our thing and control everything at the same time? So it's kind of like if we want to be famous or if we want to make a bunch of money or if we want to stay in the middle and still live a good life, take care of so everything. So what's your guys' like answer right now if I were to ask that question? Mm. Is it the millions? Is it the fame? Or is it oh the no, we're down for our own thing. Like we don't really care about making super millions or getting no, like yeah, crazy never, millions of fans. It's never been about the money for us. It's just been what we love to do, and then we are <laughs> able to reach so many people with music that it just 
it's just more motivation and inspiration for us to make more music to be able to help people through it. I think it's uh, mostly a, uh, partly where we're from, from NorCal kind of thing, and uh, we watch crazy amount of documentaries, interviews, all kinds of hip-hop stuff, so we're always kind of soaking up game as much as we can from everywhere else around the world too. Um, but it's for sure some probably mostly around here. I think if we were from LA or something like that, we'd be more in that mode. So I know that we kind of have to wrap it up. Do we have time for maybe one more and then two more questions? Yeah. One more round, two more questions? Uh -huh. Let's see what we got. Trevor, any black, you want to try it? Here, grab, grab a yellow one first, yeah. Trevor, you might as well jump in too. Find the yellow. We'll all pick a yellow. And this is Black, the, the drummer. Take a hit and hold it for 10 seconds. Ooh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, He's got to pass that then. <laughs> there you go. And Ready? then you got to shake your head like this <laughs> while you're holding it for 10 seconds. Okay. Your turn. I'm um, sure I'll go. Okay. Let's see if oh, I can get no. the dab. What? Take a dab, huh? No. What? Take a bong rip. Oh, oh, oh it's no bong here. Catch him this. Watch that be the dab. <laughs> I got to take one hit off a bl joint or blunt. All right, let's all do it at once. Like, oh, one, two. It is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and I passed it to you. Oh, I have one too. Two dabs. Two dabs. All right, let's set up the two dabs then. Oh this God. one is. What was the last thing you texted? So nice uh, low temperature. Though. I texted our guitar man to get plugged in and get ready for the show. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what was it? I, te I texted our guitar player to tell him to plug in and get ready for the show. <laughs> There's a dab going on. This isn't quite hot enough. Oh, you got a dab too? Oh, yeah, not at all. Thank you. Oh, it's about to be a fucked off night. Oh, nice yeah. <laughs> Should I do this dab before we perform? Do it. <laughs> you can do the dab. I'm doing an interview with a dab. The state of instruments, they're damn near absent because they're not doing it in schools anymore. You know, quiet is kept, you know. I'm a, t I'm a college professor and a school teacher. That's what, that's what, I, that's how I make my everyday job. Man. It just passed. Or, uh, <laughs> I deal with the absence of musicality every day. And I'm a studio rat. I live in the studio. Uh, but Reek Daddy pulled me to the studio one day and we went to studio B and he was like, come here, Black, let me talk to you. That's how Reek Daddy talks. Let me talk to you, cut. And he's rolling up a backwood and I was like, you said, said, man, my white boy's finna come through here, cut. I'm telling you right now, they got some dope. You know what a turkey sack is? The fuck is a turkey sack? <laughs> like, you put a turkey in it. He was like, nah. They put weed in there. <laughs> oh, okay, that's cool. And then he played me some of their music, and I was like, whoa, that's interesting. And then I heard Odie's voice cut on the track. And then Bleezy said it earlier. He talked about how weird his beats are. He does like the different aspects, like more on like his stuff, what we call it trippy. <clears throat> and we love it though. Uh, but his music still is still able to capture me because I'm a rhythm dude. If you're a rhythm, if you, if you can capture rhythm, being a drummer, I'm always gonna be on rhythm. But if you got a solid rhythm, I can rock with that. But what made me believe in them was was watching them when they first came to me and was like, we want you to help us. And I usually don't teach nobody nothing unless you're in school because people don't listen. But they asked me, help us. Everything I said, super sponge. I don't think there's another word for that. Like super sponge to the point where I had to stop telling them stuff. Like, wait a minute, man. I, that's something I would have did. Hold on, man. Hold on, man. You know, but it was like super love, like, and then, and then after that, like, you know, after that long of a relationship, you can't help but to have a real life bond of being like brothers. Like, we done been through some stuff, you know. <clears throat> they talked about the dude. I spoke about him. He's the one that put us together, Reap Daddy. But when he passed away, that, you know, that we were all together. We were supposed to have been at a show, and some stuff happened that way. And we ended up getting ready to do a song together, and some stuff happened that day. And we woke up that morning to find out that Reap Daddy had passed, the dude that put us all together you know, and, and keep it all inside. He re rejuvenated my music career because I was ready to quit and just continue doing, you know, other stuff. But he was like, nah, man, you need to be back on this music and pull me back in. So if it hadn't been for him, and it's been several people that had to do that because, you know, it's a, a love affair thing. But that's where my, 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 my thing was with them and where my belief came from was, was that first meeting and then hearing Odie on the music and hearing how he actually presented. He was true to himself. He didn't try to be nobody else. He wasn't trying to play gangster. He wasn't trying to be nobody but him. And you can hear it in his music. What does he talk about? What he knows about. Respect. You know what I'm saying? And that's, there's nothing but love in that. And they just come down and chop it up like it ain't nothing. 
So basically, where can everybody find you guys? Tell us where you're at, how to find you, how to find your music, how to find your YouTube videos. Oh, well, uh, you can check out all of our Grow videos, music videos on YouTube. That's our Mendo Dope channel. Uh, we have all of our music on iTunes. Uh, you can stream all the music on Pandora Radio, uh, Spotify. Uh, you can hit us up on MendoDopeMusic.com and buy direct from us. And uh, yeah, you can find everything like that. Instagram, Facebook, it's all Mendo Dope. Nice. And I'm Lash Four from 75 Girls. Catch us next time. Peace. Thinking to stop us.